life carries with it the hope of all humanity. This small voice, now crying out in dark chambers, will one day still the raging sea, will call forth the dead to rise and live. This voice will declare it is finished and shatter the grip of sin. These small hands, now grasping for comfort, will one day restore sight to the blind, will break bread and feed the multitudes. These hands will feel the piercing cold of an iron spike and bring salvation through surrender. These small feet, now wrapped in cloth, will one day travel countless miles upon dusty roads, will stand firm upon rushing water. These feet will crush the snake's head and step forth from an empty tomb victorious. This small child, this wondrous, perfect gift, 
is Jesus, our Savior, the promise of eternity. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Carols 2020 at the House of Praise. On behalf of our senior pastors, we fondly call them Papa and Mama. We want to say welcome to you. It's great to see you tonight. And obviously, despite the fact that we still have the virus lingering, it's not stopping us from coming into your homes to share this wonderful carol evening with you. We're grateful to God for life. We're grateful to God for that he's kept us up until now. And then we're also grateful that we can celebrate the light of the world. That's our theme at the House of Praise this Christmas. So we welcome you tonight. We have a lot in store. We've got carols as usual. We've got singing. We've got time of worship. We've got the Christmas chart. We've got dancing. And then we do have a family sing along as well. So we might be knocking at your door. Yes, we actually will be coming to your house very, very shortly. So you might just want to make sure that your doors are getting ready to be opened just to sing some carols with you. So um, let's know where you're watching us from. If you're watching us from London, if you're watching us from Cardiff, if you're, if you're watching us from Leeds, if you're watching us from anywhere in the world, let's know where you're watching us from. Now, don't forget that you can also share you can also like, you can also send this to your neighbors. You can send this to your best friends, to your husbands, to your wives if they're not with you and get as much people in on tonight's action. I am sure that you're going to be mightily blessed. Kicking off this evening, let's have some time of worship with the House of Praise Choir.
Merry Christmas to you and your families. I pray that this Christmas is as special as it can be regardless of everything going on. This carol service won't be complete if we did not remind ourselves of the reason for the season, which is Jesus Christ. Today's reading is taken from Luke 2, verse 9 to 15, and I'll be reading the New King James Version. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. God bless you. This one light has always been. At the start was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the life and light of men, shining in the void, destroying the darkness, the hope for the lost, this one light. The story starts not under a Christmas tree or on a sleigh with reindeers. This story begins with an angel, a messenger from God. His name is Gabriel. God had told him to find a young woman called Mary who lived in the town of Nazareth. Entering the world as a tiny child, born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, heralded by angels, worshipped by shepherds, feared by kings, God in flesh, this one light. When Joseph heard Mary was pregnant, he was in complete shock. Um, shocked, surprised because I don't know where this baby has come from, I know it's not mine, so I'm really angry right now, but I really love her. But I don't understand how she can do this to me because we're meant to be, we're meant to be strong, we're meant to be, you know, a power couple. And she, she goes and does this. Listen, I mean, how many young women like me? Listen, I had it all good. I was about to get married. Like, I just met the man of my dreams. I was doing pretty good. I mean, he's a carpenter or whatever. So, I mean, he ain't great, but he's all right. And I was like, it was all good. And then all of a sudden, an angel comes and says, boom, you're gonna be the Messiah's mother. The Messiah's mother? Me? So I was like, okay, well, if that's your will, God, and you know, how was I supposed to know Joseph was gonna overreact? Yeah, and she's supposed to be a virgin, and I don't understand how she can be pregnant. How does a virgin get pregnant? It's not even that much of a big deal. Okay, I have a baby. It's the Messiah after all, gosh. Uh, I don't know what, what, the, what the future is going to be like, but I do know that I will support her through this. Later in bed that night, Joseph was completely restless. After hours of overthinking, he eventually fell asleep, still confused with how to handle the baby issue. An angel spoke to him in his dream, and not long after, he suddenly awoke with an answer. So tender 
to his or her hometown to complete the mandatory census. So Joseph and his fiancée Mary left Nazareth, a village in Galilee, and journeyed to their hometown in Judea, to the village of Bethlehem, King David's ancient home. They were required to register there, as they were both direct descendants of King David. Mary was pregnant and nearly ready to give birth. When they arrived in Bethlehem, Mary went into labour, and there she gave birth to her firstborn son, after wrapping the newborn baby in strips of cloth, they laid him in a feeding trough since there was no available space in any upper room in the village. It's time for our family carol. Joy to the world. Come on and get up off your feet and help us sing it today. Joy to the world. Joy Now. 
hear ye, hear ye. The king has requested that everyone's name be put on the list and that everyone register in their hometown. Unfortunately for Mary and Joseph, they both had to go to Joseph's hometown to register, which was quite a distance. So I just found out I have to go to Bethlehem. Where is that? Like, where on the map is Bethlehem? Personally, I'm a city girl. So I never thought I'd be leaving the city to go to the middle of nowhere. And now, oop, sorry. And now the baby's not too far away. I have to go all the way to this little town where Joseph is from because the king wants us to be on a list. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to make it. This baby might just, oop. Oh, you see the Messiah's kicking a lot, yeah. Joseph sat down staring at his pregnant wife, completely dismayed. Joseph loved Mary so much, but was worried that the journey will put a toll on his wife. But what choice did they have? After many days of walking, Mary's feet ached, and Joseph thought it best she rode on the donkey. So my wife is pregnant and we have to go all the way to a different town to register the birth, walk in, she's tired. I mean, this is meant to be the Messiah, like, isn't God meant to send out some angels or something? Like, I don't, I don't understand, like, it's so stressful and never has this been done that we have to go through all this. So I'm just really, honestly, I'm, I'm more concerned for her because she's going through so much and having to do so much and there's no help. It's just bizarre at this point, but what can we do? When they arrived in Bethlehem, it was completely filled with people. Suddenly, Mary felt the baby kick and knew they needed to find a place to stay as soon as possible. <laughs> I'm so pregnant. I'm just so, so pregnant and I can't find, can't find somewhere to stay. Did I mention I was so pregnant? Joseph surfed the web looking for a place to stay. Could he even find an Airbnb and no one had a room available? All Mary could do was pray. The Messiah could be born any minute and we don't have any place to stay. We can't find anywhere and we're so far away from home and we're in this place called Bethlehem. <laughs> I just think I need a moment. Can you just cut the camera? I just need, I just need. <sighs> Suddenly, the owner of an inn called out and said, if you don't mind animals, we might have some room for you. I'm so sorry, I just had, I just needed a moment. You know, pregnant, pregnancy and hormones and everything, but I'm good now. So Joseph finally found a place for us to stay. When he found it, I was in so much pain, I just couldn't even, I just couldn't even. But, is, was it a nice place? I mean, it was in a barn with animals. I mean, I'm thankful that I finally found somewhere but in a farm. I mean, <laughs> I was expecting like maybe like an Airbnb or something, but you know, now it's going to be with animals. And I was just sitting thinking, God, I know you said you'll provide all my needs, but really? <laughs> animals? What can I do? Um, I can't even tell anyone this. Wait till I tell my friends this. Everyone is going to lose it. But, um, at this point, you know, what can, what can we do? It's better than nothing, you know? Hello everyone, Merry Christmas. This is your care family and we'll be taking the Bible reading from the book of Luke 1, 26 to 38. 
and it reads 26 and in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth 27 to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary 28 and the angel came in unto her and said hail thou that art highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women 29 and when she saw him she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be 30 and the angel said unto her fear not Mary for thou hast found favor with God 31 and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus 32 he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David 33 and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end 34 then Mary said unto the angel how shall this be seen I know not a man 35 and the angel answered and said unto her the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God 36 and behold thy cousin Elizabeth she hath also conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren 37 for with God nothing shall be impossible 38 and Mary said behold the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word and the angel departed from her and the Lord bless the reading of today amen welcome back again now right here I want to do something with us quickly what is your favorite carol Type in, in whatever, on whatever platform you're on right now, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on Facebook, or whether it's on our YouTube channel, type in your favorite carol, and let's see if your favorite carol is gonna be one of the ones that we're gonna sing coming up next. I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds to do that. 10. I can see people writing strange things. The holy and the ivy. Ding dong, God rest you merry gentlemen. Now, the next carol that we're going to be <laughs> singing right now is one of my favorites. The chorus says, fall on your knees, or hear the angels' voices. Bringing you this lovely rendition of Whole Holy Night is the House of Praise Choir. Sing along and worship with us.
Wow, powerful, awesome. That's a powerful rendition of the Holy Night from our choir. Praise God. What an awesome night in this carol service. Again, I'd like to welcome you. Hallelujah. I'm going to be leading us to do something special tonight. We're going to be worshiping our King. We're going to be honoring the King of glory, the awesome God. You know, this is not peculiar to just tonight. 2000, over 2,000 years ago, we had the, the popular story of the wise men where they worship our king. In the book of Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, they said, After entering into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped. They fell down and worshipped. Then what did they do? They opened the treasure test, chest. That's amplified version. And they presented to him gift fit for a king. In fact, that's exactly my point tonight. A gift fit for a king. You know, I'm going to be encouraging us tonight to worship our king, to honor our king with a gift fit for a king. They gave him gold, they gave him frankincense, and they gave him myrrh. I know today we're not going to be giving gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but we can give out of what we have how to what God has blessed us on this special night. So I'm going to be encouraging us, if you like to join me tonight, wherever you are in the world, I want you to, to give in the, in the, you can give by giving your offering, a willing offering, fit for a king. I'm going to be doing that specially tonight. As we honor our king, the king of glory, I want you to do that. If you want to do that, please, there's going to be information on the screen on how we can give. You can give by box transfer. You can do that via our website. Do that tonight. You know, I want you to take your time as you do it. Think about it. The king of all glory. The three wise men over 2,000 years ago traveled a long journey just to worship and to give this king a worthy offering. Do that tonight. I want you to do it as a family. I want you to do it as a community. I want you to give a gift that is fit for the king. May the Lord bless you as you do so. May the Lord honor your gift. And may, be, may it come up to him like a sweet-smelling offering. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'm going to take some time as we give because I know that you are packaging it. The information will stay on the screen for a little bit more time. And as you give tonight, I want you to, I want to join you in prayer. I want you to join you in a special prayer. I want you to bow your heads where, wherever you are. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this carol service. We thank you for this season that we celebrate and honor what you did over 2,000 years ago. Thank you because you came to earth to bring salvation to earth. Thank you because of the love that you bestowed upon us. We give you all the praise. As we give tonight, corporately, individually, please accept our thanks, accept our offering. Let it come up to you like a sweet-smelling savour. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we give. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to be inviting the choir, and I want you to be blessed, to stay tuned tonight. God bless you as you give. Amen. Sin that I may live again, the prayer. 
Wow, let somebody shout hallelujah. I just want to give God all the glory for all that has been happening since the beginning of this program. I hope you are enjoying yourself wherever you may be located upon the surface of the earth. I bring you good news and I bring you glad tidings. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shield you. You know, we are celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And tonight, during this Christmas Eve, we are watching and we are believing God that our tomorrow will be all right. You know, the season of Christmas, oftentimes, is the season that most people are not really happy. Number one, because they are alone. Number two, because they are going through issues. Number three, because of the weather. In England, it's winter time. It's already dark on the outside. But we discover there is a light that can overcome the darkness that you can ever experience. And that's why tonight I'll be sharing briefly with us before the choir will come back on this topic, the light of hope. The light of hope. And of course, you know me, we have to anchor our stuff in the scriptures. So we go to the book of old, the Old Testament, and called upon a prophet that thousands of years before Jesus was ever conceived by Mary, this man gave a prophetic word, and the word was accurate, the word was specific. But tonight, we go to the book of Isaiah, the prophet, chapter 9. And I want you to join me as we read the word of the Lord together. Let's give honor to the Most High God because he said in his word, he honors his word more than his name. Isaiah 9, I read from verse 1. I'm reading from New Living Testament Amplified Bible here. And let's read together. Nevertheless, that time of darkness... That time of despair will not go on forever. I love this. This pandemic will not last forever. This virus will not be with us forever. Look at the world. The land of Sebulon, the land of Naphtali will be humbled. But there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. Verse 2, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. I prophesy to you wherever you may be, you will see a great light in the name of Jesus. The light of God will surround you. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. And you will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as a people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery, and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the hermit of Midian, the boots of the warrior. And the uniforms, bloodstained by war, will be born. All will be born. They will be fuel for the fire, which means no more wars. Peace will reign. Look at verse 6. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. And the government will rest on his shoulders. And it will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, His government and His peace will never end. His government and His peace will never end. He will rule with fairness. He will rule with justice from the throne of His ancestor, David, for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this thing to happen. King James says, the zeal of the Lord will perform it. Lord, we honor you for your word. Open our eyes within the time frame that we have. As we celebrate together tonight, speak to us and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the people said, amen. You know, the whole world is looking 
for the manifestations of the sons and daughters of the Most High God. The world that we live in right now is without hope. Some are hopeless. Some are frustrated. And like somebody rightly said, he said the last thing to die in man is hope. Don't ever lose your hope. It does not matter what you are going through. That's why our Savior came. That's why Jesus came. The hope of mankind. The restorer of glory. The restorer of grace. The most high God. He came so that you might have life and have it in abundance. But our text of today was written or the word was given. In fact, somebody said during the season of darkness, during, in, in that time when the nation of Israel was going through pressures, Isaiah came forth singing. So the scripture we've read today is like a song. It was singing. And we're talking about hopelessness and you being the light of hope. Can God depend on you in your location? Can God depend on you in your family to be the light? Can God depend on you in your local church, in your community, to be the one that will bring hope to those who are hopeless? The nation of Israel was going through what they were going through, and for a period of more than 50 years, they were threatened by their enemies, just like which we are threatening right now. Sicknesses, diseases, virus, everywhere, depression, economic stuff, bad news, bad governance, bad government, things going on. And at times you want to give up. But we discover this, we dare not give up. Because the Bible says we are not of them that drop back onto perdition, but of them that presses on unto the saving of our soul. Where do we get this strength from? You have this strength if you have the Son of God inside of you. Where do we get this hope from? You have this hope when Jesus Christ is your Lord. How can you be a light in the midst of darkness when you yourself, you are being affected? It's because the light of God has been shed abroad in your heart. Isaiah was a prophet. Isaiah was a singer. Isaiah was a mouthpiece for the most high God. In the midst of hopelessness, he rose up. And then he became the light. And can I challenge you this evening? This is the word of the Lord. Right now, try the whole world. God is depending on you. God wants to use you. God wants you to be a light to your world, to be a light to your community. Yes, you don't have to be a preacher to preach the gospel. You can write a poem. You can write a note. I love it during this period. Already you can see Christmas gifts all around me, stuff coming up. But that's okay. People are doing shopping. My house is full. Turkey, all those stuff. But you know, a poem can bring light to somebody's soul. A letter of encouragement, and let's call spade a spade and not agricultural instrument. A bowl of rice can bring hope to somebody who is hungry. Believe me sincerely, I've been there before during Christmas time. When you yourself, you are hungry, but the smell of chicken, fried chicken, all around, you just know it's Christmas time. Of course, in those days, that's when we pretend that we are coming to greet you. We just knock at you, though, because at the right time, lunch time, we know you're going to break bread, and then you're going to have to fill us. But then, here we are. Thank God for God. Some are without. Can you be the light? Can you be the one that will supply? Can you be the one that will encourage? I love the scriptures. Isaiah was speaking. He said, the people who walk in darkness, they have seen a great light. Have you seen that great light? Look at the hymns we've been singing. Look at the songs. Alive. Light. Sing. Something telling you you cannot remain where you are. And I love this. A preacher called Smith Wigglesworth many, many years ago said this. He said, if the Spirit will not move me, I will move the Spirit. That was a man of faith. Yes, casting down. 
Can you be lifting up? Can you bring the music on? Can you bring your dance text with your children, with your wife, with your husband? It's Christmas time. We did not allow the devil to have the rule. Look at the old city, everything going down. You can't move around. Grandma can't come. Grandpa can't come. <laughs> they were about to sentence me. He said, you cannot come. I said, who is he that speaks? And it comes to pass. How can you block me? Don't let them block you. You will not be blocked. But look at the world. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them as light shined. Thank God for this man. That's why you hear over and over. I don't know whether I hear the phrase. I'm in my dark moment. Oh, things are not working. Oh, the dark night of my soul is so deep. Oh, we talk about somebody, say, they're on the dark side. And then some, we say, I'm wandering around in the dark. Many are confused. The light of hope. And when Jesus came, the Bible calls him the light of the whole world. So over and over we see in the scripture. And I want to take, I want to get your attention back to the basics. As we are celebrating tonight, as we are singing, as we are celebrating and then dancing, don't let us ever forget the reason for Christmas. It's about Christ. It's about the anointed one. It's about our Savior. Jesus, who died on the cross, who rose again so that we have hope both for now and for eternity. I love the word. The Bible says our God is in the heavens and he does whatsoever pleases him. Those who sit in darkness, light has come to them. I pray in your household, the light of God will visit you. You will be in the light. You will not be in darkness in the name of Jesus. Can I hear your amen? I paraphrase this because I want us to get back to singing. Wherever you find yourself, number one, always know this. If you know Christ, that the light of hope is shining on you. The light of hope is shining on you. Don't cover that light. We have a phrase in our local church here, House of Praise. When we greet one another, we say, the glory is on you. The glory is on you. The glory is on you. You may not see it, but others are seeing it. The glory is on you. The light of God is shining upon you. No matter the despair, the light of God is shining upon you. The people who walk in darkness, they are seeing a great light. Wherever you find light, you find life. Scientists told us, photosynthesis, plants will not flourish without light. How much more human beings? How much more in the beginning, Genesis 1, when there was darkness, there was no comeliness. There was confusion. Things were not working. And remember what God said. Let there be light. And light came. Clarity came. Light came. Life came. Light came. Things were working. The whole world is waiting for your light. May your light not go down in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know about you. This is me. Because there is no way, please listen to me, child of God, that you will be alive and your family will not feel your presence. Your church will not feel your impact. Your nation will not feel your glory or see what you can do. I read this some time ago, and I love this when I, when I, when I, when I, when I read this. I was, so, I was so enthralled. A woman was talking with a doctor about her husband. She was complaining about how the man had been in the house. He's useless. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. And the doctor said, okay, madam, please go on, talk to me. And she said, my husband thinks he is a refrigerator. Ah, I read, I said, how can a woman be like a refrigerator? He said, that's what the man is thinking. So the doctor said, well, you know that. That is really harmless. It's not that useless. If it's a refrigerator, it should change your temperature. And she answered, I know. 
but he sleeps with his mouth open. And the light keeps me awake. You have to process that before you get the joke. I don't know whether your husband is like a refrigerator. Always snoring, but give thanks to God. You have that refrigerator by your side. After all, this man married to this woman. When on the bed, the woman would not say the man was not alive. I looked through this and I said, listen, child of God. I said, before I depart this planet Earth, I must manifest. I must manifest my grace. I must manifest that which God has given unto me. The one that we are celebrating tonight, Jesus Christ our Lord, you know, he came and the whole world felt his impact as the son of man. Globally, eternity, we are still feeling his impact. And then when he was about to leave, he commissioned you and said, go forth, be my disciples, be my light. Go and change your world. Listen to me. It does not matter the size of your light. It goes a long way. Whether big or small, just make sure that your light is shining. When it comes to governance, is your light shining? In your business, is your light shining? In your community, is your light shining? I don't know, in your local church, is your light shining? Only one life, only one life, how will you live your life? I love it. The Bible says this now, that our God, in the book of John, John chapter 1, the light that comes from above, the light that shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. The light that gives light to other light, the light, the source of hope, the light, the reason for hope. But you know, strangely, despite the brightness of that light, it has been shining for many years. Do you know some will miss it? You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. You know, some will ignore it. I pray you will not ignore, ignore that light in the name of Jesus. Some will trade it for pleasure, for selfish reasons. But that's not the plan. The plan of God, number one, is for you to be redeemed. And then number two, for you to redeem others, for you to witness to other people. As I begin to round off, please listen to this. And I pray you will have understanding in the name of Jesus. When the Bible says, for unto us a child is born, a child is a child, selfless, not selfish. A child is sincere. A child is innocent. And you are a child of God. Whatever you tell a child to do, that is what a child will do. I hope your child is like that. The Bible says unto us, a son is given. You don't remain a child forever. You get to a level of maturity, of getting to a level of inheritance. And when you become a son, it means you're about to take over. Jesus, departing this planet earth, handed the baton to you. And when you receive the baton, it means you must run the race. And I pray this day that you will run to win in the mighty name of Jesus. So the light is on you. Don't hide that light. Don't trade that light for anything. And then the last one I'm going to share with you this evening, as you get your candles ready, if you have one in your house, the light of hope will help you to find your way. The light of hope we help you to find your way. I, let me take time to say to this with you. Please, issues will come. Challenges will come. But when you have light, you have the energy to go home. They threatened Jesus. When he became a son, when he left the manger, he left the manger and became an adult, about to go to the cross. They threatened him about untimely death. They, they, not, not, they didn't scare him. But they, they gave the word. But guess what he said? He said, I know you will kill me. But on the third day, I will rise again. What a light of hope. Number one, calling those things that be not as if they were in existence. Number two, knowing fully well that the word of God will not drop to the ground in his life. Everything he said came to 
pass. When you have that light, you can never, never go wrong. And I pray this day, as we celebrate together, that the light of God will be upon you. The light of God will radiate around you. The light of God, like God helped the major, the three wise men, when he gave them the light of the star to guide them, to direct them, the light of God will come unto you. And I pray as you receive the light of God, equally you be a light to your world in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are here to receive Christ, if you are here to be born again, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship. When you have the light, your eyes will glow. What you know will make your eyes to be brightened up. And I pray for you as you open your heart to him tonight and invite him to come into your heart. He will come into your heart. He will come and be your Lord. He will come and be your Savior. But you have a choice to make. One decision, a way to be taken between hell and heaven. One decision, a way to be taken where you will spend eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will have eternal life. I pray tonight as you pray that prayer for Jesus to come into your heart or you are rededicating yourself to Jesus Christ so that you have the full awareness of the presence of God and of the Holy Spirit. Your heavens will be open. You will not dwell in darkness again in the mighty name of Jesus. The light of God will surround you and the power of God will be all over you. I release the power of God upon you all in the name of Jesus. That the healing anointing will overshadow you right now. Whatever is disease in your body, whatever been tampered with, whether in your mind, in your soul, in your bones, in your body, in your systems, I ask the Father to bring his light of healing, to bring his light of grace, to bring his strength onto your bones in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord keep you and may the Lord guide you. May the Lord shield you and may the Lord keep you. In Jesus' name we prayed. And the people said, Amen and Amen and Amen. The Lord bless you. Come on, let's enjoy the next phase of the program as we sing together. God bless you. On the hills of Bethlehem, shepherds had been watching their sheep. Suddenly, the sky grew light and Angel Gabriel appeared before them. The light was so bright that the shepherds had to hide their eyes. They were very afraid, but then they heard a voice saying, Tonight, in Bethlehem, God's Son has been born. He will be a great King. Glory to God in heaven. Peace on earth to everyone. The shepherds blinked and rubbed their eyes. It was such a wonderful sight. The whole sky had come alive and stars were like diamonds. It was like heavenly fireworks display and everywhere fell silent and calm. Good news. And ever since Jesus' birth, folk like you and I have been telling others the wonderful news of God's Son. Jesus was born to be our light in the darkness of this world. Good news. Later, much later, Joseph and Mary received a surprise and it started when they heard strange noises coming from outside. Joseph peeped out and said, Mary, you're never going to believe this. There are camels out there and men dressed in robes. They look like kings. Before Mary and Joseph had the chance to pull themselves together, their wealthy visitors were kneeling down in front of Jesus, offering gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. It was truly a joyous celebration. I can't believe it. I actually cannot believe it. 
I just gave birth to the Messiah, to our Saviour. I can't believe it. I think this is like the happiest day of my life. I'm just so healthy baby and I'm pretty okay myself so there's that. Thank you God. But I'm so so just still in shock you know like so many people came out like there was the shepherds three kings didn't know them they came gave us some gifts so privileged to have actually been there um right now i'm just overjoyed i, I feel happy i feel i don't know there's just there's just love in my heart right now to have actually experienced this moment as something that I'm going to cherish forever. I heard there was a host of angels, but how was that experience? Angels? I mean, it's not every day angels sing after you give birth, I guess. So you can't really compare the experience. It's something I can't even imagine, something that you can only dream about. But it's such an honor. Like me, little Mary. I gave birth to the Saviour. I'm just so happy to be a part of such a big story. And ever since the birth of Jesus, people like you and I have been spreading the good news that God's Son, Jesus, was born to be our light in the darkness of this world. A carpenter by trade, yet a miracle man, making the blind see, the lame walk, the sick healed, feeding the hungry, speaking the truth, loving the world, this one light. Son of man, son of God, the lamb who takes away the sins of the world, mocked, scourged, pierced. A crown of thorns placed on his head, destined to die. A final breath, body hanging on a cross. But this, one light overcomes the darkness the night cannot snuff his power he is resurrected the stone rolled away an empty tomb a new covenant a fulfilled prophecy an eternal hope this one light our savior he is power he is grace he is alive he is light wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, the Almighty God. This one light, three in one, Christ, the everlasting Savior, sent to earth to shine his glory in a dark world so that we can receive this one light and share it with others like wildfire to diminish the night. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish. Are we live? Are we live? Sanjay, are we live? We're live. We're live. Oh, okay. <clears throat> One, two, three. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. And a Happy New Year to you in advance. I hope you've been enjoying our Christmas carol service for 2021. We've had lots of singing, we've had dancing, we've had carols. 
We've even had drama. The light of the world drama. Wasn't that epic? Yes, it was epic. Now, guess what we're doing right now? It's the 12 days of Christmas sing along. Yay! Yes, 12 days of Christmas sing along. Now, for those of you who have not been singing along, who have not been dancing along, who have not been participating, this is the time for you to get up and join in. What did I say? Get up and join in. So, Shaniqua, drop those chicken bones. That's not the time. This is not the time for that. Yes? Nikita, Nikita, and Chantel. It's time to have our sing-along. Okay, so here are the rules for this year's sing-along. Number one, get up. Yes, that's the first one. Number one, get up. Number two, you are going to have to find some good space around you. I know that we've been doing a lot of social distancing, but this is friendly space, not social distancing. Friendly space in your own living room or your own apartment, wherever you are. Number three, I've got three, I'm sorry, not, not three. I've got two of my friends right here with me. Say hi, lads. Hello, lads. Good. Right. So we've got two of my friends here with me. They're going to be showing you actions, dances, and moves that we're going to use to portray each one of the days of the 12 days of Christmas carol song. Yes, that's a mouthful. So let's go through each one of the days. And these are the things we will do to represent each one of the days. Glads, are you ready? Cool. On the first day of Christmas, we have a partridge and a pear tree. This is what it looks like. Okay, good. On the second day of Christmas, two turtle doves. You're getting there. On the third day of Christmas, three French hens. Three French hens, yes. Yes, three French hens, good. Fourth day, four calling birds. On the fifth day of Christmas, I can hear all the ladies shouting, Five golden rings! This is the action for that. Bling, bling. Good. On the sixth day of Christmas, six geese are laying. Don't lay any eggs. You don't lay eggs. Just the geese. Good. Seventh day, seven swans are swimming. On the eighth day, eight maids are milking. Uh, ninth day, we have nine ladies dancing. Good. Fine. On the tenth day, ten lords are leaping. Sir. Go. On the eleventh day, eleven pipers, sir. No, eleven pipers piping. <laughs> And on the twelfth day, it's twelve drummers drumming. Good. So did you get all of that? Yeah. Now let us sing the song. So remember, space. Yes, space. Get ready for those of you who've put on some of the pounds during this lockdown season. Now it's time to burn the fat off. Oh, sorry, did I say fat? No, sorry. I'm sorry. Now it's bun. Nah, now it's time to burn those extra calories. All right, 12 days of Christmas, let's do it. Take it away, boys. On the first day of Christmas, my true love get to me a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Did you get that? Fantastic. All right, let's go to the second day of Christmas. Go. Six <laughs> 
Christmas, everybody. And remember, if you recorded those sessions, we would like you to tag us on your socials so that we can see what you got up to during the 12 days of Christmas. On behalf of everybody here at the House of Praise, we want to say one more time, Merry Christmas. I hope that you've been having a great evening with us. First of all, thank you for spending your evening with us. We're grateful to God for life that we can actually come into your homes and spend this Christmas carol service with you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for staying on. Thank you for sharing this link with your friends, your families, your loved ones, and even your enemies. We are grateful. Now, if this was your first time of seeing what we're doing at the House of Praise, we would have loved to spend this evening physically with you, but we know that very soon, 
very very soon would all be gathered again at our lo different locations we have locations in london we have locations in leeds we have locations in cardiff and we also have locations in grace so thank you for spending this time with us we want to say merry christmas to you may god bless your family may god keep you and give you a special christmas gift now just so that you know in a couple of days it will be christmas day so we would have our christmas day service yes we will be coming live right into your homes as well so 10 o'clock on christmas day that's the 25th of december we will be coming straight right into your homes for our christmas day service and Yes, the big finale, sorry, the big finale, the big one, the crossover service celebrations on the 31st of December. Yes, it's going to be live, it's going to be super, it's going to be big, it's going to be exciting. What do we have planned in store? We have the word, yes, that's essential for 2021. We have prayers, yes, very, very essential for 2021 as well. And then we have loads of praise and worship. We have loads of singers. We have some super guests that are going to be worshiping with us and be making the night. They're going to help us make the night superly big. Yes, there's a lot of super stuff going on. So we want you to tune in with us. Subscribe to our channels. If you haven't done so, share the link and get ready for what God is going to do in 2021. Now, signing us off tonight for the last carol for this year, for this night, is the House of Praise Choir singing, Oh come all you faithful. Are you ready to come? Are you faithful? Yes, let's go. Time to sing it out. Oh come all you... No, that's not it. Choir, help me out. God bless you. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Say... Oh, come, all oh, ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to bed.
Christmas, everybody. God bless you.